What is up, boys? Working class on DeerCast. Well, let's get to it here. So, Doug has never been on this series as a co-host. No, this is my first time. Hey, welcome to WC on DC. First time caller, long time listener. (laughs) And then I'm almost positive that you are, depending depending on when this episode launches, Uh you are the first guest that's outside of the jury family and outside of the working class bow hunter family. Dude. I'm like that nephew that comes over, comes in town every <laughs> yeah. once in a while. That one you feel bad for, right? right. <laughs> ah, he just had a rough life. You know? We'll get him on, do the kid a favor, yeah, yep. help him out. <laughs> Make know? him feel good. No, quite yeah. the opposite. Yeah, well, quite the opposite. What's up, man? Hey, dude, life is good. Good. That's good to hear. I mean, obviously, there's some uh, big bucks on the studio yeah. table here. Yeah. Um, for everyone listening in podcast land, uh, this will be in video land too on Deercast. Of course, if you're already in Deercast, hey, what's up? Good for you. Um, Dude, two studs, man. I think we're going to pick one of the two and talk mm-hmm. about it on this episode. Okay. And then I'm sure there'll be a regular working class series podcast about the other one. Yeah. Um, and then there you can say, you can be a little more vulgar on that series. <laughs> right, right, right. So, I mean, dude, I mean, you've been killing it. Um, I know we text a lot during season, mm-hmm. kind of talk about game plans and frustrations and where you're you're in a different state, it seems like, every time uh, we turn around. Well, my theory was hunt as many states as you can, increase your odds. Yeah, right. right. I mean, <laughs> there you go. It, it almost feels like uh, the woods here aren't giving me the luck I need. I'll try some woods somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a blind blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Every now and again. That's yeah. true. Well, I, I think what we should do before we go in, because on Working Class bow hunter, mm-hmm. you're a regular guest, and people know you, and you've done a lot, a lot of like three-hour podcasts with sure. us there. Um, for the family here on DeerCast, mm-hmm. um, talk about who you are and what you do. Um, John Mulligan. Uh, a lot of people know me as from uh, as Johnny Utah, a nickname that I got from a previous you know law enforcement yeah. you know, career, and um, former co owner of Wicked Tree Gear was on the uh, the White Knuckle um, podcast or uh, web show mm-hmm. there for a few years, and then branched off, started Arrow Wild TV, and and now just full time photographer in Arrow Wild TV. Do a little you know side marketing, product design work for yeah. some companies, but. 90% of everything's in the outdoor hunting space. I do a little bit of stuff outside of hunting um, in that fishing market. That's kind of yeah. new, starting to do some stuff there. Which but we learned about last time you were on the podcast. Yeah, it's like it's pretty a, wild. The yeah. cat masters. The cat masters. Cat masters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those deals. It's like uh, that people talk about diversifying a portfolio. And right. this is how I diversify my portfolio is not mm-hmm. to pigeonhole myself into one thing. I mean, I know that for me, um, I'm a bow hunter, mm-hmm. but at the same time, my camera can point the direction of anything, whether it's right. fish, catfish, you know, it's cool. AR-15s, whatever. Um, for the sake of working class on DeerCast, do you want to just talk about briefly what you did, where you got the nickname Johnny Utah? Sure. Do you, not, you don't have to. No, no. So, um, so I did undercover narcotics for a little while, um, as well as being a uniformed police officer, mm-hmm. but I did a stint, um, with uh, with the FBI Safe Streets out of Cincinnati, and when I got assigned to that, uh, working some of those cases, actually one of my buddies, my old business partner Todd mm-hmm. Prignitz, uh, who's I mean, passed away a couple years ago, he uh, he we were we were at at a at a bar one night, and he's like, "Dude, you're the real Johnny Utah." And so for anybody that's never seen the movie Point Break, I have I, I'm sorry that you've lived under a rock. It's just one of the greatest masterpieces of cinematic. Hey, I'll add it to the list. Yeah. <laughs> add, add it to the list that <laughs> they will never watch. watch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze are in this movie, and Keanu Reeves is an undercover FBI agent working these bank <laughs> robberies, and his name is Johnny Utah. He was mm-hmm. the, the famous um, Ohio State quarterback. But uh, yeah. Anyways, um, that's where the nickname came up, and and I just we kind of laughed it off, and then the next morning we're walking around ATA, and somebody's like Johnny Utah. That's I'm cool, like, man. Oh boy, this is gonna stick. Yeah. I like it because I always say I I call you Utah. Yeah, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. just pretty funny. Yep. But as someone says Mulligan at first, I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. who? Yeah. Who's that guy? Yeah. It's just that what some of the nicknames are. Like, I don't like that guy Mulligan. That Utah guy's okay. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, same dude, but uh, okay. <laughs> Got news for you. Right. Right. <laughs> same yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, Iowa was good to you. I mean, yeah. both these bucks are studs. One's from Texas, one's mm-hmm. from Iowa. And I've never actually held a Texas rack before. They're weird. But that's a buck for another podcast. Yeah. The Iowa buck is, to me, looks bigger than the Texas buck. And I think it's just because it's that true classic yeah. Midwestern uh, whitetail, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. The color, the thickness of them, you know, they're... 
they're they're unique. I mean, yeah. Illinois, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, they all kind of have that similar yeah. similar touch feel. To Definitely. Them. So let's start, let's break it down, man. I yeah. mean, uh, is this a spot you were hunting a long time? Is this a spot you had, or is this a no? New? It was a, so it was a brand new lease. Um, I had some issues with a with a lease uh, last year, and oh yeah, uh, we talked about that on the podcast. That was uh, yep. So I, I knew that I didn't want to just have that property anymore. Yeah. And um, so I, I sought out, uh, found a, another lease, a second lease. And and I had a couple of really good bucks that were showing up this summer. Um, some slammers, mm -hmm. really, really good deer. And this buck was actually the number three buck um, that was there on the property. There was three bucks that I said, okay, either one of these three, mm -hmm. I'd, be lo I'd love to target and chase. The number one and the number two, I didn't have another picture after first week of August, mm -hmm. they just vanished, uh, completely. And like a lot of us, we see those bucks, you know, they shed velvet and they're summer bucks yeah, and they're just gone, you know, like heartbreaking. They, yeah. They're yeah. not going to be there in the fall. And, and it's hate unfortunate. To it. Hate to see it. Uh, yeah. Hate to see it. And you know, it's one of those things too, like with trail cameras, man, it can really like really frustrate you, you know, I <laughs> yeah, mean, it really it, gets to you. It does weird things to your psyche. It yep. can. Yep. Cause you're like, oh man, I'm going to have these bucks in yeah. November. No, you're not <laughs> wrong. Like they lose yeah. velvet. Like you wait a week. Like he'll be, he'll be back. Yeah. They'll yeah. come back. And then we, we've been talking about this a lot. Trail cameras are, and I realized this when Mark Drury said it on one of the podcasts, like it almost creates a false ownership of animals. It does. Yeah. yeah. I got a picture of him. So it's my deer. He's mine. He was right. on my farm. Yeah. That yep. thing, but it's not. So it's, uh, that was, that was frustrating. And you know, of course we've all had those deer that you get a picture of them in April, May, June, July, August, and you kill it in November. And you're like, the dude's just a homebody. He never left. How mm -hmm. it's supposed to work. Yeah. That'd be great. So, um, unfortunately the number one and number two, uh, they didn't do that. So I was, um, my, my deer skill or <laughs> lack thereof <laughs> told me to go to these, this one particular tree stand. And mm -hmm. that's where I was going to have an encounter you know, um, kind of an X crossing kind of a deal yeah. coming off of some bedding transition area that this is where I was going to catch common traffic. And, um, and I hunted there a couple days and I wasn't seeing anything. Mm -hmm. My cameras weren't picking up anything. And I'm like, man, so what I had done in the summer is I had set up a box blind, um, for really for late season, mm -hmm. but it was going to be an early season observation spot. Gotcha. So as much as I did not want to, what I felt waste to hunt and get out of the game, I made the adult decision <laughs> to take a good frosty morning mm -hmm. and go sit in this box blind where I could see thousands of yards of field edges right? and open fields, even the neighbor's open fields. Not that I can hunt over there, but at least I can see what he's, oh, he's got. Doing I see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. 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 At least see if he's got deer going through his cut corn. Cause I was sitting on cut beans. Mm hmm um, so I opted to do, to do it. And even, I remember even climbing into the box line that morning. I'm like, I'm completely taking myself out of the game today. I'm wasting a hunt. I can see that. You I'd know? feel the same way. I think yep. yeah. it was weird. It was so weird. Um, sun came up and this, I see this buck with this just tank tank body buck comes mm -hmm. in he's working a scrape and, and I'm looking at him and I'm like, that son of a gun is like 70 yards from my trail camera. Ouch. That's why I'm not getting pictures of him. Yeah. You know, it's only telling the story in front of that one tree. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And I'm like, I bet he's been there the whole time, uh -huh. you know? So, uh, watched him, watched him. And then he started pushing some does. This was October 27th. Mm -hmm. Um, he starts pushing some does and, and when I say pushing, like he ran to them, got within 20 yards of them, lip curled, and they ran off. Yeah, they but just he didn't burst. chase. You know yeah, what I, I mean? I got you. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, I see what we got going on here. Mm -hmm. Like cold, frosty morning. I saw where, what bedding area draw he came from. I see what scrape line he worked. And and I know at least in his, um, in his season, he's starting to seek out and chase a little bit and check right. out what's up. So what that told me was the next cold frosty morning with that wind, I knew where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate part was I had a tree stand already hung 10 yards from where he stepped out. Oh, money. Yeah. So I was like, okay, less screwing around already. Yeah. Game on. Yep. I was like, now I just got to wait. So, um, before I even got out of the blind that morning, I'm looking at my phone and I'm looking at the upcoming forecast and I see November 1st, it's going to be like 31 degrees mm -hmm. in the morning. 
and there's going to be a real windy cold front that's coming through the night before. So it's yeah. going to cool things down real fast. I saw the most deer this year on November one. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it was sick. So, um, there is a local, uh, a local kid that's been running a camera for me a little bit this year, kind of a greenhorn in training. Mm -hmm. And he comes down with, I don't know if it's COVID or comes down with some illness of some sort, but yeah. He sounds like death. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> hacking and coughing and yeah. snotting. And I'm like, uh, no. Yeah. So I call, uh, I call a, a, a buddy of mine, Winston, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, does he, you know, he works with Lee and Tiffany and, mm -hmm. and I call Winston and I said, man, I said, I, I can really use you November 1st, you know, tomorrow morning yeah. uh, for a morning sit. And he's like, man, we're still cutting some beans. We're cutting corn. Like, oh, like farms we're, for him. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. He's like, we're pretty busy. And. Um, I'm like, man, just a couple hours. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, I think we can, you know, I, I can get away for a little while. So, um, he meets me at the house and, and we went out and it's a good get, friend. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, and so the way this farm lays out, I wonder like, how he asked to get off yeah. for a couple hours or he's just doing it for the ready to get in the field. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> Lee, Tiffany, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey. Don't, don't fire Winston. It worked out. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. guy. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's they good probably guy. don't even know. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this property is kind of L shaped. And you know, I'm a big person with entry exit. Um, yeah, that's one of those be. tactics that I really do believe is not overhyped. I mm -hmm. believe it's a real thing. I would agree. Yeah. And, um, I have no choice to get to this stand. I have to cut across a wide open cut bean field mm -hmm. or option B walk around 400 yards, 500 yards of, of scraped field edge next to the bedding mm -hmm. <laughs> and my winds blowing right into it. Yeah. No, I can't time. do that. So I'm like, oh man, well, it's dark, you know, uh, you know, and I do think you can get away with a little bit, you know, when it's dark, they mm -hmm. might see you, but they don't really know what you are. Yeah. If you feel better about it too. Yeah. So I told, we get to the edge and I was like, all right, Winston, here's the deal. He's like, where are we going? I'm like, we have to cut across this bean field. And he's even like, what? You know, we got to cut uh, wide across the wide open. And I was like, it's going to be noisy. It's dry bean stubble. Yeah. I'm like, it's, we're going to make all kinds of you know, mm -hmm. cutting across this bean field, but I was like, dude, we just, we got to do it. So we haul the mail across there. And right when we get to the field edge before we, in the tree, the tree stands like 10 yards tucked in, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I said, before we climb up, I'm going to freshen up this scrape. There's a, there's a, there's a real fresh scrape. That's huge. The size of a Volkswagen right in front of this stand. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go ahead and freshen it up just to, to help us out a little bit. Cause we are in a little catchy, it's a little, little sketchy wind situation. Mm -hmm. But, um, so anyways, we, um, I freshen up the scrape and the one thing I've got going working in my advantage is the, uh, the timber draw drops off behind me, mm -hmm. super steep and severe, like within 15 yards. Yeah. So even with that morning, not quite having the thermals yet, my wind still should, yeah, right. You right. know, go over and not run yeah. down. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was, that was the tactic used for that stand in that location. Awesome. Up. dude. So we get into the stand after I fresh up the scrape, we get the camera equipment all set up and we're waiting for a sunrise. And the only time I typically will sit is when I first get in the stand in mm -hmm. dark. Yeah. Yeah. And cause I know I'm going to stand the rest of the time. So I might as well you know, relax a little, little bit. Yeah, yeah. Get your knees going. Exactly. So, um, you know, yeah, get the, get those tree stand bearings. But, um, I hear, um, uh, I hear a grunt over my right shoulder and, um, I start, like in the dark still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's it's just it's just getting to that light. The timber's dark, but yeah. you know, the okay. field's it's, daylight. It's, uh, I heard Aaron Blicey say this, gray light. Yes. There and you I go. I was like, I mm -hmm. never heard that phrase, but it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So I'm in legal shooting light, um, but I would not feel comfortable shooting in the timber. Yeah, I know what you're point. saying. Exactly know what you're saying. Yep. And uh so I hear this and uh I thought my when I hear those sounds, I don't know why. You're in the woods, you should know that it's a deer, but I'm like like, is that my stomach? It's because you want to hear it so bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did I, did I imagine? Yeah. You know, am I making that sound in my head? And, so you get your uh, head up and like listen again? Yeah. Right. One more time. I, I take yeah. my beanie and yeah, fold. Yeah. One my, more time. One more yeah. time. Do you ever do that? You take your beanie and you fold the fold of your beanie so uh -huh. your ear sits like that. Like a little amplifier, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's yeah, like, cupping it. It makes a difference. Well, sometimes. you can do that trick with your phone too. Make it a little louder. <laughs> right. Same thing. Yeah. So, so I'm like, like that. is that what I heard? And uh, then I hear, rant, rant. And, uh, so now I'm like, okay, I got my head turned to the, to the right and I'm on the front side of the tree. Winston's on the back side of the tree and, and he's like, Hey, did you hear that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it sounds like a buck. And, uh, so it's getting louder, louder. And yeah. it's just like a steady, like, 
Hmm. I'm like, dude, he's coming. I love you know, that. Whatever it is, he's he's pushing something out of there. So to the right of us, we see this doe squared out, you know, the, of the timber. And um, she's working her way up the neighbor's fence line, mm-hmm. just, just on that side of the neighbor's fence line, about 80 yards away. And I'm like, dang. And you immediately get frustrated because I'm like, he's just going to follow yeah. her right up there. Whatever yeah. he is, he's not coming in. Um, and then Winston goes, man, he goes, it's a buck. And he's like, it looks like a decent buck. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we all get in those situations where you're in the tree and a depending on where you are with the branches, you know, like one person can see something and I'm like, I can see legs, but he can see antlers, you right. know? And yeah. I'm like squatting down and I'm looking and, and I'm like, Oh, and I catch a glimpse of something. And it looks like it's enough of a rack that I need to probably go ahead and get my bow. Yeah. Just in case worst case scenario, you can hang it back up, just pass them up. Yeah. Yep. So, um, anyways, I grab grab the bow and, and, um, he stops, looks to his left and he picks up the scent from that, uh, from that, um, the scrape, scrape that yeah. I freshened up and just boom, jumps the fence. Oh, oh nice. and he's marching yeah. right to, you know, right to this scrape. And yeah. I'm like, he didn't like that. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, here we go. He's broadside. I'm like, Mer-. and he, there is no stopping him whatsoever. He is on a mission to come to this scrape and freshen it up. How far is the scrape from where you're sitting? Seven yards. Oh my. Seven yards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and then he turns right into it and I'm like, and I'm already at full draw like and hard to you hard quarter to me. And I'm at, he's at seven yards and I'm already at full draw. And I'm just like, ah, crap. I don't, you know, I mean, I don't love a quarter two shot, no. you know? Um, and, and then I start thinking about it. I'm like, wait, seven yards. Mm-hmm. Like I got, you got this, you know what I mean? Just punch it on the front side of his shoulder. Like yeah. you're, you're good. And I, I waited for a split second. Um, felt like 10 minutes, but you know, it's of like three seconds. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I'm waiting for him to possibly turn back mm-hmm. or relax. And as if he starts to work the scrape, you know, maybe I do get a better broadside shot yeah. or something like that, but um, it's not happening. And then he twitches just ever so slightly where I see him sink his hips. I'm like, the only thing he has to do now is, is jump. Like yeah, he's, yeah. he's already kind of preloaded. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, darn it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. it's now or never. So I went ahead and let it rip and it um, punched it right inside the front of his shoulder, mm-hmm. buried it in deep, deep. Um, and he bounds out of there and man, it's, I'm like, he's not making it out of the field. Now you take an arrow like that. Cause it goes right. If you do it right, which if you're going to take that shot study and know your anatomy yeah. and know, know your, uh, your broad head and your arrow yeah. and all that setup. Yeah. It um, just devastated him. Just took everything out. Yeah. I've never heard that sound before, uh, of a deer running off. It was just like this gurgling. Mm. Just, and I'm like, that arrow's oh, in there just doing dude. damage. Yeah. 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 I'm That's like, like instant confirmation that you got everything that you need to get. Yeah, yeah. And he almost went down, and then he gathered up his stuff enough to clear this, like, 30-inch barbed wire fence, you mm-hmm. know? He cleared it, and then that was it. Really? You know, it just crashed. And oh. I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I'm so assuming Winston got every, all the like, footage. Yeah, he, oh, did man, an amazing, he did an amazing job of, of staying and tracking, you know, on the deer, even through the timber as mm-hmm. he crashed. And uh, did a did a really really good job. And, awesome. And panned, you know, he he zoomed in and then zoomed out as he you know caught everything going away. Yeah. Did, did a great job. And uh, so I hang my bow up. And my first thought when I turned back to him, I'm like, well, that happened fast. Yeah. <laughs> We've been in the tree like 18 minutes. You oh, know what total. I mean? That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. I was like, this that's crazy, you know. And then I'm like, do you think he's down? And he's like looking at me like, <laughs> he's <you> down. <laughs> yeah. I don't care, man. I've been there where even when you feel like if I don't see him tip over, there's still a yeah, chance. There's, there's always, always that second guess in your yeah, head. Yeah. There's a yeah. sliver of doubt. You're like, man, I hammered him, but did I? That's why well, it would be nice to have like a cameraman or just a buddy with you at all times. Oh, like, no. oh no, he's, he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Just a second confirmation because aliens still can take deer and take them <laughs> that away. That actually happens more than people realize. It, it does. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, anal probing you didn't make a bad shot. Alien just took your deer. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's tragic really, but yeah. uh, that's a yeah. podcast for another time. Yeah. They, I mean, they should probably cover it more, you know? Yeah. Not enough people <laughs> alien, talk about alien, it. Just like, what's that? 150? Yeah. 160? We'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. I know awesome. there's people listening. They're like, you know, there was that time that, that deer did Now wait just a minute. Yeah. There was a, there was a bed with a lot of blood, but no deer. And I always wondered what happened. It was aliens. Well, they like backstrap more than people give them credit for. Yeah. Ask Rogan. He'll Can confirm. Say that. Say that. I was like, check out Rogan talks about it all the time. Um, what's yeah. the guy from Blink-182 that believes in aliens? Oh. Uh, Delaney. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, not, not the drummer, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. 
So, so yeah, that can happen. And, uh, happen. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Yeah. Yep. It didn't happen. So um, uh, it's funny because I was even like, hey, Winston, I was like, you know, let's, let's just wait about five minutes, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll climb down and we'll start picking up blood and, mm -hmm. you know, just confirm everything. And he's like, yeah, good, because Lee's texted me like nine times, like wanting to know where <laughs> oh, I'm at. Oh, boy. <laughs> where are you? Yeah. How far are you from where he works? Where are you hunted roughly? 30 minutes. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he can get there fast. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Getting yelled at by the boss. But it, like I said, it was so dry, they were finally able to get back into the fields. And, you yeah, know, because yeah. what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, Lee does a lot of farming. Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of farming. Yeah. A lot of guys like this have farms mm -hmm. that they're, I mean, that's how they do what they do, really. Yeah. It's Yep. So some income there. You right. got, I mean, it's yep. hard to make a living in the industry. It is. It is. It's, it's a lot tougher. Um, you know, the gram makes it look like, you know, we're all yeah. eating bonbons. They only post in the makes, highlights. Usually. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure I mean, if people knew how much time I spent on my only fans account and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, extra income. It's just too much right. time. But our it own, is. our own Austin Chandler, he's a farmer. Yeah. I mean, right. you know, mm -hmm. the same thing with your family, Doug, I mean, yeah. you, they have, I mean, your dad and everybody yeah. has day jobs, but they farm on the side. That's how you justify getting a loan for ground sometimes because the ground can make some income to right. help you make the payment on the exactly. property. It's tough out there though. But, it is. It is. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's real tough. So, um, at what point did you know it was the number, your number three? Um, so when I saw, when I filmed him that day, mm -hmm. um, four, four or five days prior, mm -hmm. you know, okay. I recognized him right there and that the kill day, um, I knew it was him, Cause like I said, he was in like, there was trees blocking yeah. my visual and I'm like, it's a good deer. It's a good, it's a, it's a pretty good buck. I think he's, I think he's like at least 40, 50 class deer. Mm -hmm. And then once he broke free of those trees and I married, I gave that to him, he was at 20 yards and I was like, that's the buck yep. from four days okay. ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm definitely killing him. Didn't look at antlers anymore. Right. Hand that thing to me since we're yeah. in video here. I just want to play with him a bit. Oh, my shoulder. Oh, so, so heavy. <laughs> Those brows are awesome, man. Yeah, he's cool. He's, he's super Good bases, cool. too. Yeah, real good bases. Yep. Um, good bases. Cut the, cut the teeth from him. And I don't work with that Wildlife Labs company at all. Um, they're they're not a sponsor, but yeah. I paid full retail, sent the teeth in. I've never done that before. I just wanted to do it. Yeah. And it uh, it did come back as a five and a half year old. No kidding. It's yeah. kind of fun doing that. It, it is. It, it is. is cool to yeah. see. I love his brows. Yeah. And this buck, man, um, I, you know, you sent me some photos and, mm -hmm. of course, follow you on everything, Insta and Facebook, whatever. But this this buck's way bigger in person. Like, I knew you can always tell, but it just, like, the brows and the bases and, like, it spreads good. And he's, he's cool, man. Yeah, it was, um, it was, good it was super awesome. And he does have that... Whoa! I see what you're saying. That cut. It's like a it's like a cut. It literally looks like I cut it with a saw or something. You know, that's deep too. Yeah, I think it was that high fence that we had him pinned in. <laughs> he got stuck in it. He got stuck. That is like a saw blade cut. I know. And it, and it was there, and it's dirty. It was there when you when you killed him. Yeah. Okay. Because I had an idea. Well, I mean, it is dirty. It is. Like yeah. Because I was I. Uh, it, I would almost think somebody did it when they were skull capping. That's what I was going to say, like in the bandsaw. Hey, uh -huh. whoops. Yeah. Oops. oops. Well, so, sorry about that. Hey. Little Nick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was there because <laughs> Winston and I, when we first grabbed a hold of him, I was like, dude, Winston, look at this. You know, I was like, that's so weird. That's interesting. You wonder how. I wonder what he hit. Well, I mean, yeah. there's some nicks up here on his three. True. Uh -huh. One theory, like I said, there was that barbed wire fence that he kind of ran over. Uh, and his head is way down. You can see in the in the hunt episode. Yeah. Um, he uh, there's all that uh, borax coming off. I, I there. Sorry. There's so that. much borax from skull plates in the studio right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if he kind of like ran through that fence and he just you know could be did it there. You, you wonder because if you look at it at a rack they're pretty nicked up and i would yeah. assume a lot of it's from thorns or barbed wire or i mean yeah it's got to be stuff uh, that's abrasive right it, it but, seems like trees just kind of polish them yeah yeah well, well do you do this i know i do i think about like think about all the places that deer has been true oh, yeah you know what i mean like who is how many people have seen that deer with that rack mm -hmm. like where did he go where was he you know what i mean like i oh, just yeah. i wish you could take in your area like and just collar certain ones yeah so you could just mm -hmm. learn yeah. what they did yeah or it'd be cool like once you killed one like somehow you magically had access to that information like mm -hmm. that'd just, be wild it'd just be neat to know 
if I, um, I, I, I made this comment to a buddy one, my, uh, one night and I said, if I could pick up a brand new hunting property and the DNR would allow me to collar five mature deer, I would never take my bow out of the case that season. Mm. Just but I want, I want 24 hour Intel of exactly where those five deer went. Imagine what you could learn about draws and wind and how they were working that farm. Yeah. The next season, dude, not a buck, <laughs> buck doesn't stand yeah, a yeah. chance. No, Let no. Let me add him. It, it, what's funny about that is like different properties take different amounts of time to learn them. Oh yeah. Some are fast and some take forever. Yeah. Depending yeah. on access, depending on mm -hmm. terrain, oh, of course. Right. Yeah. But it seems like, um, once you learn something that a big mature buck did, it almost unlocks like Pandora's this chest box. of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you're like, man, if that mature buck did that yep. and you know, it might take you three years to learn what that buck did mm -hmm. because you're trying to be a uh, low pressure or whatever it is, because you can't go in there and just tromp around all the time, because then the deer aren't going to tolerate that yep. like you wish they would. But yeah, I mean, once you do that, you're like, oh, okay, I get that now. So now you can apply that yep. for future deer, and you know, not that they're going to do the exact thing, but mm -hmm. they could be doing something very similar. Sure. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it's cool. This uh, in this property, I was moving cameras around. I was I was really getting kind of confused. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's just going to take visual boots on the ground tree stand time to yeah. really start to learn this property um because yeah I, even I though i feel like learning. you wasted your hunt i mean you actually yeah it yeah. helped you tremendously observation yeah. sits i love them yeah they feel like low they're low success feeling going in for that mm -hmm. day yeah for that day yeah and well you know like once we get into my favorite three weeks of the year is the last week of October and the first two weeks of November. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste a single day. That was a dad move. You know what I mean? Like that was a mature, <laughs> mature, buck. <laughs> that was a mature buck move. And I don't know that I've ever done that. Mm -hmm. Normally I'm all, I'm, I'm way too stubborn. I'm like, Nope, I'm going to a kill stand. Yeah. Right. Every day. Well, you want the, you want that feel of high odds of success. Yeah, well, well yeah, and there's that pressure like, of like the three weeks that you love. So yeah. it's like, I mm -hmm. can't be wasting a day. Yep. And even though like this is kind of, you know, basically, you know, what I do for a living, mm -hmm. um, I still don't take it for granted. And I still want to make every mm -hmm. day, yeah. you know, um, because I, there's other stuff I could be doing. There's my right. turkey call company. There's, you know, work more hours. I mean, there's uh, other client work that I could be working on. There's family, there's kids, you yep. know? So I, I, I never take any of it for granted and I want to maximize my time mm -hmm. uh, and not waste any of it as much as I can. But um, yeah, it was, it was neat. Uh, I'm glad it worked out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I would have sat in that blind that day and not seen anything, I would have been like, okay, well, right. this sucks. Right. Like, I wasted a night of hunting. Yeah, this farm. Yeah, didn't get any inf information at all. I love yeah. the how there's no deer here. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> honestly, but I like how you you mentioned the trail cam. It's like you you, you it's easy to get down in the dumps because you're not getting deer on trail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to be in, right in front of that tree. I know. You know what I mean? It's I have a spot. Um, I consider it a pinch, kind of a pinch point. Mm -hmm. It's bas basically from like this year, it's cut beans to a hayfield. Yeah. And it's just where the farmer drives from the hayfield to the beans. It's just a little path, mm -hmm. and it's just a strip of trees on each side. I put a, tra a trail cam there. and The deer ton. love it. Well, yeah, they love it. I get a ton of pictures, yeah. but I have a stand not too far away, mm -hmm. and probably the last three, four times I've sat it, I've watched deer not walk in front of the camera but cut down further into the hayfield mm -hmm. and then walk by me, and I'm like, see, it's easy to be like, ah, I don't want to go there because I, nothing's triggered my camera for five, six days. Well, but right, they're they're two foot behind the tree. Yeah, where those deer are cutting is it a lower elevation point in the field? No, um, no, it's not. But it's not far off from a spot sim like what you're saying. Have you but, ever noticed that in those fields where you get that little? Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's a natural swell kind of yeah. in the field. Yeah, they love coming in and out of those. Yeah, low points. they can actually like hide. They kind of hide. From, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I use now the field that I'm referring to that bean field. Um, north, it kind of goes up to the timber. Mm -hmm. Well, there's really no timber to the south. There's a, just a, a strip, like a fence line. Mm -hmm. and But it's very gradual rolling down there. So when I go to hunt afternoons, I cut there because that gradual hill will keep any deer from seeing me yeah. from the wood line. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of is. But there's just a good path where the barbed wire fence that used to be there mm -hmm. is down. And so they cut there probably just as much. It just depends on the day as they do through that farmer 
entry and exit. Dude, I remember, um, you know, one thing that I, I learned, uh, I learned from, from Todd back in the day, um, we did a tour of his property mm-hmm. and, um, one of the things I picked up on was he had some, some fence crossings mm-hmm. and he would actually take like a ratchet strap on some barbed wire. And you know, like the, mm-hmm. you know, the wrestlers will yeah. hold the rope down so the, the wrestler <laughs> yeah, yeah, can get yeah, in yeah. and out of the, out of the yeah. ring. He was doing that and gathering up all of the strands of barbed wire and just making a low point. Yeah. Yeah. And those lazy suckers, would, that's, that's where they'd the, cross. I've done zip this ties. Is really nice. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, where like um, a tree will fall on the barbed wire fence. Oh yeah. Create slack on a couple yeah. of strands. Yeah. I've done that with the bottom and the top one, but I've, I did zip ties, uh-huh. but the ratchet strap, that's a good way to like make, I don't know. The, the zip tie was kind of a pain cause you had to like get it in. You got to get the zip mm-hmm. tie tight. And then sometimes you got to put three or four on there to hold it. But yeah, um, that's a good idea. Yep. Well, sometimes it trains how deer are stuck in their ways. Like we used to have a fence mm-hmm. and there's like one opening that always go through it, but we took the fence out, but they stuck to that one opening. Yeah. Still. Like it's like they're stuck in their way. The path uh-huh. was there. Yeah. Yep. I get that. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It was, it was pretty it cool. Was pretty, it was neat to see that. And, um, he was, uh, he was, uh, one of those guys that taught me a lot about, um, you can change and manipulate you know, deer travel. Mm-hmm. I always thought, well, they're just, they travel the way they travel and yeah. you got to adjust and adapt to that or whatever. But, uh, obviously Mark and Terry, those are two guys that yeah. <laughs> have written like books on, you know, could, or could write books on yeah. manipulating deer travel. Well, we did a podcast with, uh, for this series with Perry, one of their farm managers mm-hmm. an awesome guy. Um, and we talked about that a little bit, like how they design the fields that they plant and how they plan them um, and then do yeah. putting cover in certain spots. And it's, I'm going to like beg and, and I'm going to beg him to take me out one day and like go through the process. Maybe when they're like, playing in some of that. Cause I just like to see like, especially if you could see before and afters. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to just see, like, Hey, draw on the map. Like how, what'd you do and how'd you do it? Like, let's get mm-hmm. really specific here because like I the feel, dry erase series. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That'd be cool. They'd probably be like, get out of here, man. We're not doing that. Yeah. We're like not, getting not, any of our secrets. <laughs> yeah. They would show me, I bet. But, yeah. uh, I mean, it's cool. You see guys that are, they're, professionals they uh-huh. they're just they're they're basically biologists yeah yeah they're you know well i mean you know you don't get the name mad scientist for nothing <laughs> true know? right and it not be derogatory mm-hmm. you know like <laughs> right yeah. seriously yeah. They're, they're smart i mean last oh, yeah. time i talked to mark and terry we were um uh with shot show vegas and um you know we didn't really know each other very well other than just we knew of each other yeah we recognize faces and stuff like that obviously i recognize their faces more than they recognize <laughs> mine so i'm like a nobody but they were like hey and we chit chatted they knew wicked more than they knew me gotcha but, yeah um but anyways so yeah we you know, we chit chatted one night and they've always been always been super super good guys the best yep and, I mean, they let us do this on DeerCast, so that says a lot about them. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, uh, so, uh, hey, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, man. Well, dude, I'm glad you came out to do this. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure of recording. You're the first non-related guest on the podcast. Well, it's you know, you set it off right. It's an honor. What do you end up scoring? <laughs> it's an honor. Uh, 157 was 157. a rough score. I mean, I I mean, I ought to get you know Kurt over here to to put a real score to him. Um, yeah. You want the Instagram score? Or do you want a real life score? <laughs> <laughs> I kid. Instagram handicaps like plus seven, 180 yeah. and an eighth. Yeah. He's, he's probably 170 now. Yeah. I love how if you turn them sideways and stick them out, they, they magically they grow get bigger. Yeah. They become a uh, 158 or, or whatever to uh, all of a sudden they, you start to measure them at 16th of an inch. Yeah. Of right. inch. Yeah. It's weird yeah. how it works. That's yeah. how, that's how it goes. Yeah. No, he's uh, like one, like 157. Um, and you know that was uh, that was one of those like took me ten minutes scoring deals. Yeah, yeah. I didn't use any tape, but I was pretty legit on yeah. measuring tines and stuff. I like see that, that all day, all day. So that's um, a great buck. Yeah, it was super cool, man. And um, and I'm pretty sure. So I've never killed a buck in the six or seven. Um, but years I've got, old. Yeah, yeah, I've got one other buck. Um, that I believe was five, but this is the only one that I can, I confirmed, you know, by, um, science. That's cool. Trust the science. Trust the science. It's, uh, it's rarely wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, so it was super cool to get that, that back. And, um, yeah, I, it's funny cause I did it. Um, I'm really impatient. Yeah. Like 
really, really, really an impatient person. So I'm like, well, you can pay this much and you'll know the results in 90 days or this much in 30 days. Ooh, this one in a week. Take my money. Yeah. 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 I get that. I'm the same way. I, I pay for convenience a lot. True. My wife yells at me, but I'm like, man, if I can just have it done. I know. Yeah. Be done Super in a nice. week. Right. Ta- time is money. As yeah. Some people say. Exactly. Exactly. So that was neat to, to get that back. And yeah. that's a neat service that they provide. Yeah. Oh, it is cool, man. Because it takes guesswork out. It does. And it's cool. You you have that. I mean, I have a certificate from, I don't know if it's the same company you use, but where that dough skull's at. And she was 10 and a half. I had that. They're supposed page. to mail me a certificate, but I, I don't know what it looks like, so I don't. I'm, I don't know. We'll have to see if it's the same company. I yeah. always forget, and I feel this bad. joint was in Missoula, is where you sent the. No, lab I don't stuff. think that's the same one we did. Is this guy in Michigan or something? Yeah, ours is in Michigan. I oh, believe. okay. Well, we'll look. I don't know if the name's on there. We'll, sure. we'll see. Um, hey, when's this episode air? Roughly, do you? It's have out. A, oh, it's out already. Yeah, it's out. On the, I on the yeah, I, I feel bad. Well. I haven't watched it. Oh man, yeah, it's on the. <sighs> we can pull it up right we'll here. Watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it. We right should after watch, this. dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was like, yeah, plug it, and I'm like, oh, man, you cranked it out then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it out right away. He says he's impatient. Yeah, <laughs> get it done right, <laughs> right now. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's out on it's out on the Arrow Wild TV YouTube channel, and um, I need to upload it to to Carbon TV. I actually got a couple episodes, and I'm a little behind on. That. I need to upload to the Carbon Carbon channel, but cool. Yeah, it's out on the YouTube channel uh, now. It's uh, been doing doing pretty good. I think it's up to about twenty thousand views. Or awesome, something. man. Awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, congrats, dude. It's an absolute stud of a white tail. You're killing yeah, congrats. it. Congrats. Thank, thank you very much. Killing yeah, it. Having a good season. Yeah. Any, anything dude, else? You do? guys, and I think all of you guys have all hit bone. Ross has to close on the deal. Oh, okay. Um, he's, he's a late season guy. Very anyway. busy guy, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he owns his own electrician company, and that guy, I, I don't even know if he sees his family with how busy with work he is. Yeah. You know, it's like, and he, he'll call, I'm sorry, man, I wanted to make the podcast, and this, I'm like... I, you're working, bro. You're like, working, man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. You're working class or something. Yeah, you know? that's what's weird. funny. Like you're working class. Yeah, that's that's what's funny when people go to Ross's man cave and they're like, "Man, it must be nice to have all this." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't be the must be nice guy here." <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I I bought a must be nice T-shirt. You did? Yeah, I got so tired of people going must be nice to hunt for a living. I'm like, you have no idea. Like people that really Not know me, they're like, dude, you're at the gym at 10 and then you go back and build turkey calls at night. Like, when do you sleep? I'm like, eh. Yeah, what is sleep? You know, I mean, I mean <laughs> when you really, really, you really <laughs> think about it. <laughs> I rest sometimes. Yeah, I, I close, close my I close eyes. My <laughs> eyes. <laughs> you yeah. sleep like a deer. Yeah. You just kind of sit there. Right. Oh, and then get back up. Oh, and yeah. Leave. What was that? That was good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, good night of sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan of caffeine. Uh, caffeine and motivation, man, it, it'll do wonders for you. It's but, uh, uh, it's scary when you have to work for yourself. It's almost like you can't really ever quit working. No, no, there is no, you know, and, um, you know, and, and again, like if I'm working with a client, like I want their business to do well. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I genuinely think of myself as a good person, but then also if their business is doing good, then I stay employed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and you know, with the show side and the hunting side and photography side, turkey calls and, and. So, you know, you get a lot of irons in the fire and yeah, whenever there's nobody, there's no, and I'm not saying people get a nine to five and then, you know, oh, you can just kind of screw off, but there's that comfort that comes with a nine to five. You know know that you're going to have a check, you know, for the most part, as long as you go in and do your stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I can do everything right. And I still could lose all my jobs. Right. True. Yeah. Just because something. Somebody couldn't follow through or just whatever. whatever. Another, you know, photographer hack. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) No, but somebody comes in and they undercut you or, or they just simply want to go a different direction, Yeah, you know, um, just business or, um, you know, they might not be selling enough products or they can't get products to sell. And so then they cut their mark. And it seems like marketing and advertising is always the first thing to get cut, you Mm -hmm. know? So you know, every day is different tough business. Yeah. Yeah. And well, like the reaction to that money spent is delayed sometimes, but it's there. It's going to work. Right. But it's just not, it's not, it doesn't happen instant. instantly. Yep. Yep. Sometimes some you have to saturate like, stuff. Yeah. That's yep. why I think that's the first to get cut. It is. Yeah. You and, know? um, so, and I've played both sides of that coin, you know, with wicked, I, I was on the manufacturing side, but I ran our marketing as well. Mm-hmm. So I think that's one thing that has helped me with working with these brands is I've been in their shoes mm-hmm. like, and I know what worked and what didn't work and what's fluff. Right. Um, right. There's conversion marketing and then there's eyeball marketing. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about both forms of that on variations of podcasts and you guys do a good job with it and everybody has their place, but it's, you know, finding what a company needs. Yeah. Um, 
uh, my analogy is it's like going to the bar and getting turned down from a girl. Mm -hmm. You know, if she's got five other dudes that are hitting her up, and don't take offense when she tells you no, because she doesn't need any more dudes. You know what I mean? She's got a, she's, there's a dude in that lineup with a mustache that might be better than that one. It's Maybe true. not. Maybe it is this yeah. one. Yeah. And you and you <laughs> might be. I'm not even putting in that much work. <laughs> right. I mean, that mustache took a lot of a lot of calories yeah. to grow. It shows patience. It shows dedication. Yeah. I mean, it's attractive. Confidence. That's yeah. right. You got to rock it. But <laughs> so I always tell people like it. It doesn't always matter like um, that if you got turned down. Um, because it, she didn't need any more dudes in her life. So if a company is like not wanting to work with you, maybe they already have a bunch of bow hunters. They they need they need a right. guy with a spear or something. You know what I mean? Like right. they need a yeah. different form yeah. of hunting. Crossbow yeah. hunter. Yeah, they need crossbow hunters. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. It is what it is. Well, cool, man. Well, yeah. I appreciate you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Arrow Wild again. TV on YouTube. Check it out, guys. Yes, sir. And uh, Dougie, you got anything to add before we get out of here? Nope. Congrats, great buck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And congrats to you guys as well. Thank you. You guys are having a good season. Yeah, hard to complain. Hard to complain. We're happy. It really is hard to complain. Well, awesome, guys. Thank you for listening um, or tuning in and watching Working Class on DeerCast. Another episode in the books. Always a ton of fun. And, uh, man, we're uh, pedal to the metal with this and Working Class Bow Hunter all the way. So uh, thanks for the support, everyone. Appreciate it. All right. Go shoot your bow. We love you. Or go shoot a giant. There you go. There you go. Hey guys, another giant tracker segment. We have Abe Forrester here from Wisconsin. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing, Kurt? Good to see good. you, buddy. I'm good. Thanks for doing this. I, you look like you're at work. I I am. I'm in my office. I got uh, dog kennels here for my office. I'm a I'm a hunt club manager. So oh no I get kidding, hunt all the time. Really? So, that's yeah, really that's what, what you I do. do. Yeah, I uh, I drive around on four wheelers. I play with guns. I manage a shooting range, a hunting range up in Kohler, Wisconsin, and. Uh, we do a lot of upland hunting here. Got about uh, cool. 600 acres of property here that I manage and get to play around on. And yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Awesome. So if someone was like, Hey, I want to go to that guy's hunt club. How do they find you? Um, River Wildlife's the name of it. It's part of uh Kohler company, the American club. We're owned by Kohler company. And then it's uh, um, American club, five star, five diamond resort here in Kohler. So pretty Dang, cool place. A cool day job. Yeah, it's not bad. That's something I have to do a better job of is when we do these segments or just the regular interviews in general. It's like, hey, what do you do for a living? But some people don't really care to talk about it, but that's a <laughs> that's a really cool job. It's it's pretty fun. I can't complain too much. Like literally my office is dog kennels. That's pretty cool. So does so, that add into this big giant buck that you shot being able to do what you do for a living? Is that or maybe that's part of the story and I'm rushing it a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, this one doesn't tie in too much. Um, but being able to talk to the people that I talk to is what got me knowing about this deer and that he was in the area. Okay. So obviously That's a lot of hunters and stuff come through here every day that right. all some stories started flying around about this giant buck. And I was like, Oh, I better do a little research on this, see where I can find them. So is that really, you heard about it? Like just people talking about it and yeah. connections and whatnot. And then no kidding. So break yeah. it down, man, because Obviously, if anyone's read the story on DeerCast and the Giant Tractor segment, but um, you know you can read it too. But I'm I'm more of a wage brand. I can't read very well, so I like that's why they put me on the interviews. I'm yeah, kidding, sure. by the way. But if anybody wants to believe that, you can. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, I found out about this deer. He uh, he was he was living down pretty much in this state park, but he kind of ventured out into residential areas, and I found out mm. about him two years ago already. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of guys that were hunting him, but people started talking about him more and more. And he was just this giant buck living in this residential area that had a Facebook page and people would take pictures of him and post it on Facebook page. He had a, he had a Facebook page. Yeah. Okay. So. That's a rarity. That might be the first person I've interviewed <laughs> that has, a. I, okay, I'm gonna write that down. Cause I, you might, that might be a first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this buck had a uh, Facebook page. What was his name? His name on there was Willie. I named him Big Mac. So <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, Facebook he, uh, page. That's he's already famous. Facebook page Willie. Yeah. When I when pictures started flying around of me with this deer, even though I didn't tell hardly anybody about it, I was getting calls from guys I haven't talked to for like two years. Like, did you kill Willie? No um, kidding. Uh, 
how did you find out? <laughs> so, oh man, the community hated you. Oh, there was, yeah, there was, there was a lot of hate. I was expecting death threats, but I didn't get any. So man, lucky you. I know that was a plus. Well, that um, is okay. I'm, I'm already fascinated by the Facebook page changes the story a little bit because it just <laughs> like, there was people invested with the personality of this deer, like putting imaginary yeah. personalities on a deer, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knew him as Willie in that area. So, okay. So Willie's um, just got a Facebook page and Instagram, a TikTok. Yep, exactly. Pretty much. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I found out about him in the state park and he'd venture out. And uh, I got to talking to people and got some permission on this strip that was this chunk of woods kind of between the state park and the, the residential he would feed in. Mm-hmm. But I figured out through the past couple of years here that as he would come out of there, when the acorns were falling in the, you know, right at the opening of our season, he would kind of munch on those acorns on the way through. So mm-hmm. I had him, I had him pegged last year coming through there and uh, he was on my trail cameras every day at like between three and five o'clock like super mm-hmm. early last year and you know opening day rolls around i go to hunt him in the afternoon thinking i'm gonna kill him disappears doesn't show up again till the end of january no kidding like, i thought he was dead i left cameras in there just to see if he was still around could never find him didn't hear any more stories of him but completely disappeared you're checking his facebook page see if he's updating his status <laughs> yeah, right okay so yeah i i ended up somebody told me about it because they saw him at a restaurant in the area and like Like applebee's just eating at an applebee's or something yeah right no Um, kidding okay so so i was like wow he is still alive nobody because you can hunt that state park from like november 15th on or something with muzzle oil so i i totally expected somebody killed him but right often end of january shows up he's back on the trail camera sheds antlers a little bit later thinking I'm never going to see that deer again and mm-hmm. and couldn't believe it when this year all of a sudden a, a big mainframe buck that just grows and grows and grows popped up again right in that same area doing the same thing as last year mm-hmm. and uh so this year I I went I actually sat in that area um opening morning which I I shouldn't have done I I snuck in there real quiet though and it just didn't feel right. I was out of there by like seven 30. I'm like, yeah. no, this isn't going to work. So I figured out where he was, where he was normally coming through was afternoons. He didn't come through morning much. So I was like, I got to hang a stand in here. So I did a hanging hunt that day, mm-hmm. got back in there at like noon, one o'clock hung that stand up where he normally came through and, um, was sitting all night, a few does and stuff came through. And then I had a, probably 120 130 inch 10 point come in and uh he was down right in front of me and he kind of worked off around me and i just spotted off in the distance um that big mac buck i just saw him pick up his head above the brush and put it right back down Mm -hmm. so i quick stood up and grabbed the bow and got ready for him and i figured he was coming right through there and i pulled up my binos and i'm like scanning that brush and i can't find him anywhere and uh I put the binos down to just look again with my eyes and he's like 30 yards right in front of me, right where I need him. Oh, no kidding. So he snuck I in on slide. you. Yeah, he was, he was, he came straight through that brush right to me. And so <laughs> I tossed the binos back into the, back into my chest harness and, uh, get set up on him and turn, get drawn back. And he's coming through. I think it was 32 yards. I had ranged him quick mm-hmm. um, when he came through and, uh, I literally have him broadside 32 yards. I'm like ready to touch the trigger off. And right as I'm about to punch the trigger, he turns to face that other buck. And now my pin is like on his forehead and he's facing right at me. (sighs) And it's, it was, he came in late that night. So it was closing time was 715. And it was like seven, it was 712 when I shot him. So it was like (sighs) 710 or something. Bring her down to the wire. Yeah. So it's, I mean, I'm in some pines. I'm, I'm pretty dark in there. Yeah. Edge of pines. It, it's kind of pines, hardwoods mixed in there. Um, and so it's, it's dark and, uh, you know, he turns, he's facing me and I'm waiting for him to turn back broadside and he's just staring that other buck down. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden he, he, uh, he spins just a little bit and gives me a bit of a quartering two shot. And I'm like, I got to take that shot now. Yeah. And so I zipped it right through. I was, 
I wasn't too worried about hitting that front shoulder. I switched to uh, a single bevel broadhead this year. Mm-hmm. Um, a little more so resilient. Could, what's that? A little more resilient. Yeah, I figured I could, even if I did touch that front shoulder, I could probably punch through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, snuck it right in there and, you know, stuck them. And I thought I heard the arrow go through and stick into the ground below them, but I didn't know. So I just, I called the wife quick. I'm like, hey, I, I think I just shot Big Mac, but I literally have no clue at this point. Right, right. Like, I got to climb out of the tree. So I, I climb down and I get out there and there's like bits of lung and stuff on the arrow. Yeah, I'm well, like, perfect. All right, I I smoked them. I I know it. So I I waited a little bit there, and, and I walked out there, and he was seventy yards. He never even. I no mean, kidding. A, so so great run where you're at is there like houses around and stuff like oh, I, yeah. I think like so you're like looking at swing sets and stuff like that. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I think there was a swing set about hundred yards off to my uh, off to my north. No kidding. So uh, were you worried like, oh man, he's going to die in someone's pool or something crazy? You know? Well, my, my thought was, is that all the residential over is straight north of me. Mm-hmm. And then it's like a, a big swampy area in the state park to the south and straight east. He could go to for a ton of ways that, oh, so he, you know, he'd probably run there is your thought. I, that- my, my thought was he's coming out of that. I'm going to shoot him. Most likely he's going to spin around and go back to that. He's, he's yeah. going to go to the cover. Makes um, sense. Yes. That, that was a slight concern of mine that I'm going to be tracking through backyards and having to ask permission yeah. on this, but I was 90% sure he'd spin right back around. Yeah. So, okay. So he goes 70 yards. I mean, talk about walking up on him, man. Like what were you surprised with how big this deer was? I mean, it was, so it was kind of funny because when he tipped over his, his head actually went into like, you know, green grass and shrubs and stuff that were into yeah. there. So as I walked up, all I could see was the white of like his tail and his belly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm walking up to this deer and I'm like, I just kind of took it in for a second. Like, yeah, I finally get to grab him. Like, yeah. No kidding. This is insane. This is two years in the making. And so I, I reach into there and I pull it up and it's just like, whoa. I mean, he's <laughs> forgot what he was like 21 wide or something and scored 186. So it's insane. When you get to pick up a deer like that, it was just, it, it was unreal. I literally called one of my good hunting buddies. I was like, yeah. I don't know how to feel right now. Right. Like, it, one, probably because it was like you've been thinking about that deer nonstop for two years. Exactly. And then it came to an end. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like, a, yeah, you're excited, but I feel like you'd be like so excited in that moment. You wouldn't really like show it in a way. Yeah. I was like, I was stone cold as could be the entire time. I never started really? shaking nothing. Did you, like, did you get like, did a couple of days go by before you realized what, what caliber of deer you'd shot or how did that, like, did it ever come in on you like that? Yeah. It, it kind of hit me like later on. Mm-hmm. Um, we got him out of there and gutted him out somewhere else. And when we pulled him back out of the truck, it was like, Holy cow. Like yeah. this is, this is a world-class world-class deer. This yeah. is, this is what I've hunted my whole life to do. Right. And yeah. It's the bucks that just don't come around. You know what exactly. I mean? You see them on the internet, you see them on hunting shows, but yeah, it's like, how could I ever shoot one like that? Exactly. And that's, that's what it was when he first came out. It was, you know, I saw that rack and it's like, this is real life right now. Mm-hmm. This is actually, I'm not watching a show. This is really happening. What, what, what was your buddy's reaction? Did he like meet up with you? I'm sure he was just like freaked out, right? Yeah, I had a couple guys come out there that knew I was hunting that deer and knew about it. And yeah, they were everybody <laughs> jumping around, high fiving and hugging. And so you said you didn't really tell anybody for a little bit, like I'm, you know, like the public or the town or whatever. So, yeah, I, you know, I tried to keep it pretty low key just because I didn't know what kind of backlash is going to come from it. <laughs> right, right. So Did- I, were you checking like the, before like anybody found out, were you like checking the Facebook page to see when the last time it was like updated? <laughs> no, I was, I don't even have Facebook anymore. I waste too much time on you it. You deleted so it because you it. killed, you killed Willie. Yeah, right? I killed Willie. I had to get rid of that before the death threats came in. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good call. Um, no, but I have friends and stuff that were keeping up on it and, and seeing where he was at. And there was, I mean, a ton of guys in this area that knew about it were hunting them. Even the wardens after they found out, that I was the one that killed them. They're like, Oh, we were trying to get permission and get in there and hunt them. No kidding. Yeah. That's hilarious. So yeah, well, they, they knew about them. They kept seeing them at night when they were driving around that area and stuff. And no, did you ever find the sheds from any of the 
previous year? I never did. I I never figured out where he disappeared to that entire that entire yeah. time last year. Um, I think I think I know where he was, but it is like a thick just just mess down in there that yeah. is a it's a big chunk of big chunk of forest in that area, big river bottom and state yeah. park and that's you know, amazing that like you know a deer can live in the mix with you know a suburban area and disappear. Yeah. You know what I mean because it just seems like it'd be like oh this is in the bag. I, I you know what I mean and then you know where he is at all times and not yeah, the case. That's that's what I felt too was like yep, I'm going to I'm going to kill him. I was in every big buck contest in the area that that year prior and then this year I'm like I'm not even signing up for a single big buck contest. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. I'm just going to go out and see if I can kill this deer this year. Yeah. I don't want to jinx yourself before you get going. Exactly. So that is a great story, man. I think the the <laughs> Facebook page made it for me because I, <laughs> that is funny as hell. We, uh, I had one similar, one of my buddies, uh, real good friends. He killed a buck in Utah, um, called the cemetery buck. That yep. was very popular in the same way. I don't know if it had a Facebook page, but <laughs> the forums, you know what I mean? You go to any forum and it was all about the cemetery buck. Well, yep. when he shot it, I can't, we, I have to go back and listen to the podcast. I don't think he said anything to anyone outside of his close friend circle for a year, almost two years. Yeah. And then he finally made like a big post in the forum, like basically paying the deer its respects and talked about where it moved to during hunting season and like where he killed it, how he killed it, that type of thing, basically. Yep. And what he did was it was so big he called the game warden to track it with him because he knew rumors were going to go flying that this butt got poached or whatever. So he yep. shot it, then called the game wardens like, you need to come up here. And so there was actually what's funny. It's cool that he did because when he on the forum about the buck, there's pictures of him through a spotting scope from a distance of him with the buck <laughs> talking to the game warden. That's cool. So he covered his grounds pretty good with yeah. that. But I, uh, yeah, I, you know, in my position, I've gotten to know the game wardens around here pretty good. And I, I told them about it, you know, a week or two later, whatever it was. And yeah, you know, got talking about it. We were talking hunting and they just said, we knew of a lot of guys that were willing to poach that deer. Like we're glad somebody that wasn't poaching went out there and got that deer and, and shot it because that would have just been a shame if we would have had to take that deer. So that's a good point too. I mean, you live in people's backyards at a certain point. It's like, for some people they don't have the they can't hold the temptation back or they're just yeah not good people but uh yeah man that's awesome you seem like an awesome guy man you appreciate the deer for what he is and i think the story is awesome it's uh one yeah, of my was, favorite giant trackers to this point i was it was actually bittersweet to shoot him because it's like now the now the hunt for that deer is over now i gotta mm -hmm. i gotta move on to the next one and see what i can find and yeah you know which uh i had a good one pop up pop up this year that i'll be going after next year we named this one whopper now we okay. had big mac last year now we got whopper i love so. it we'll, we'll shoot that one and then <laughs> reach out to me and we'll do another giant tracker next year and follow yeah. up on uh, big mac and whopper <laughs> big mac and whopper yeah now i uh i actually leave for iowa what is it friday here so a couple days and heading down to heading down to uh my buddy's place wicked whitetails and uh trying to shoot a big one down there too. We're rifle hunting down there, but awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that season stuff, late season stuff. And I, we finally got the cold weather, which is yeah. good. Except it's supposed to be 68 degrees next week in Iowa. So go figure that's yeah, that's going to be rough, but we got some, we got a couple down there that might top this one. So really? Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Well, best of luck to you, man. I appreciate I you telling it. the story. And uh, being a part of the DeerCast family with that. Um, yeah, dude, this was a fun interview. The Facebook page thing made the interview for me. That's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, but, hey, if you want to shout out, if anyone wants to, you said you don't have social media, so you really have no Instagram handle or nothing to shout out. So Nope. Well, maybe so, people come do some hunting with you, and yeah. that's how they'll have to follow you or meet you. So Absolutely, yeah. Come on out. We, uh, we love having new people around here, so. Look cool. it up. Come check out Kohler. We got a pretty cool little village here that we got a lot of cool stuff. So awesome, take man. Your, take your wife, put her up at the spa and come out and do some hunting with me at river wildlife. That's uh, that's smart. That's real smart. That's how you <laughs> right? earn some brownie points and get to go hunting and then keep exactly. going hunting. 
Okay. I see what you're doing. You guys got a marketing plan figured yeah. out. <laughs> you're a smart guy. Well, thank you so much, man, for doing this. Thank you everyone for watching and listening. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one later.